Hello and welcome. Uh, we are now going to have a short introduction on how to utilize chat GPT for um, learning in the course Applied IoT. So I'm going to make a short uh, video of me exploring how to utilize this. And we are going to use both the free version of uh, chat GPT 3.5. And we are, I'm also going to showcase uh, GPT 4, which is um, the uh, um, paid version of, of chat GPT. So let's get started, shall we? Okay. I have now opened up a, um, a chatbot um, uh, interface and uh, please note that this is not the official chat GPT interface. I'm actually uh, using a service called chatbot UI uh, and this is a way for utilized API keys without using the chat GPT plus version. So in this case, I'm going to have access to both 3.5 and 4 with the API. So let's start with 3.5. I can also set the temperature here. And let's keep it at 0 0.7. It won't matter uh, too much perhaps for this example, but I want it to be a little bit creative in this case. Um, so let's start a new chat and we'll start with the basic version. This version you are able to find in a, um, uh, the free version of, uh, of ChatGPT. So let's start. Hi. Uh, I am a beginner in IT. I want to develop a IT project. I am at the moment. Um, yeah. Studying a course in intro to IT. We are supposed to create some kind of basic project. I have bought start kit with the following. Uh, and in this case, I'm going to go directly to the start kit, which I think that most of you have bought in this course. I'm actually just going to take this and then I'm posting this in here. I want to get some ideas on what I should do. Please help me out. And you can see now that um, the ChatGPT is trying to help me out. You have a good start kit with you. And here are some ideas for your IoT project. And it says here, temperature and humidity monitoring. You can use the digital temperature and humidity sensor to measure the temperature and humidity in a room and connect it to the Raspberry Pi Pico and then use a program to display the readings on the LCD screen or web page. So there are some ideas here. Okay. Um, okay. Thanks. So always good to uh, be polite to the AI. You never know. So uh, let's start with something basic. I like the idea of temperature and humidity never programmed before in my life they talk about micro python can you guide me and we can now see that we actually get some uh, guidance uh, and it it actually shows me that oh I should first set up MicroPython on the Raspberry Pi Pico. You can download the firmware. 
we can actually check if this works. One thing that you should be very careful about is that don't ever trust uh, what uh, ChatGPT says uh, blindly, uh, especially not when you talk about uh, links and such. So if you go in here, actually it did have the a correct link. Um, this can often be the case that those are not correct. Uh, but it doesn't know that we're using a, a Pico wireless. Obviously, how should it? Uh, and then it gives me um, some input here. Install the firmware and it will appear as a storage device on your computer. Create a new file called main.py. And then you need to install the DHT11 module to interact with the sensor. And then you should type the following command. Actually, I can just take copy code here and it will most likely work. And then I get a small code snippet here. And then I should save this and connect it. And you can see that connect the VCC pin to free uh, vault, GND to GND and data to GP7, etc, etc. Uh, okay, it's a lot of new terms here. So I'm now seeing if like you're talking about things that I don't understand about. So let's see. I apologize for the confusion. Let me explain. The Raspberry Pi Pico has a number of pins that can be used for digital input, output and analog input. These pins are labeled on the board and can be identified by their GP, general purpose number. So GP7 refers to pin number 7 on the board, for instance. Uh, so this clarifies a bit, I guess. So let's ask about that weird stuff. And this is, I think, the, the, the real power of ChatGPT. I can very naturally just ask a question. And obviously, I have now given ChatGPT in the beginning um, a, a list of the components that I have included, included in my start kit. So it refers to that. But I've just said that there is some weird other stuff. And what's the whiteboard? And now it explains to me that the whiteboard that comes with your start kit is called a breadboard. It is a common tool used in electronics for prototyping and to help you build and test circuits without the need for soldering. And there are a grid of holes that are connected, etc., etc. Uh, so it actually understood what I asked for, even though I just said a weird white thing. Let's see if it can uh, help me understand more things about this. I know that when we started this course, uh, some people accidentally didn't remove that static um, uh, protector which was under the board. Let's see if I can get some help on that area. It doesn't show up in the Computer, nothing happens. And then I actually can get this to help to troubleshoot. And it says that I try different port, uh, try different computer. And this are helpful tips, absolutely. Try resetting the Pico. Uh, you can hold the boot cell button while plugging in the USB cable. Check if the bootloader is installed. Uh, if there is, is receiving power. And actually it starts with uh, the first thing that we usually see that it, we always start with like, have you tried a different USB cable? Uh, I think that in the start kit now you get the USB cable, so that is covered. But we have seen in like several years that you 
have a USB cable that doesn't um, transmit data and uh, only for power and then it obviously doesn't work. Let's try it again. I now write it doesn't work at all. Something must be wrong here. And I now ask, there is some black sponge on the Pico. Should that be there? Uh, and I think now it actually misunderstood. Black sponge on the underside of the Raspberry Pi Pico. This is called a heat sink. But okay, this is not a heat sink. Um, and now actually I said that what is this really a heatsink? It's soft and fluffy. And now it said that the black sponge that you're referring to is not a heatsink. It's actually an insulating pad that is used to prevent the Pico from shorting out any metal surfaces made plans um, And you should uh, remove this, obviously. So. And then I can ask, should I remove this? Uh, this is actually totally wrong. Uh, so it, you should actually remove it. So it, it's now giving me a, a very bad advice here. Um, but we are still on the GPT 3.5 model. And we can we just... So this was probably a good example in, in some way that we can see that it is still helping me. Uh, but don't trust it blindly. You will get some strange responses and it can also hallucinate quite much. Uh, but if you want to get some tips and advice on projects, it's really good. It can be very creative. So help me with some creative ideas for the for projects. So now I can get a lot of ideas. Um, and from from this, I could continue on and 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 just ask, give me more. Uh, what I could also do is that I could go into any project that I um, would um, that I think uh, seems fun, uh, I could pass that into ChatGPT and then help to create something from that part. This was a little bit on how you could utilize ChatGPT, uh, the free version for, for some kind of input. So a lot of questions that you might have and you're sitting on your own, obviously you can utilize ChatGPT in any way. It's also very good, I would say, at coding. Be also very careful for whatever you get in, in response from, from ChatGPT, uh, especially the free version, as it will uh, actually, it can be quite much that it doesn't go the right way. Uh, give me an example code for... And now I'm just asking it for an example code. Um, it should read a DHT11 um, sensor. Um, and I want to connect it over Wi-Fi and it should send data to an MQTT server. And then I get an example code here. Um, and you can see that I can actually copy this code. Um, as far as it seems now, it might actually work. Um, might be that there are errors when you run this, uh, but from just glancing at it, it seems to be okay. So you can 
be very quick in in um, in developing if you use this you can create this kind of boilerplate uh, you can also ask if you don't understand if you get some errors from your code you can pass the errors in the same thread that you have already started and uh, also get some advice on how to um, further on uh, troubleshoot and debug also if you don't understand anything well you can ask And now I'm just asking it to explain the code and then it actually tries to do that. So it obviously start to in, in, import the libraries and then you connect to Wi-Fi and the MQTT um, and the broker and then read the data, etc, etc. Um, and it tries to clarify these things. Uh, and I can also maybe ask some follow-up questions. Uh, and obviously you shouldn't really put the Wi-Fi credentials and any credentials directly in your code. So let's just ask what does Mike what what does ChatGPT answer if I uh, ask this question, and it says, "Yeah, you're right. Hard coding sensitive information like Wi-Fi credential, etc., you should not do." So in this case, it gives me an advice on storing this in a separate configuration file, such as config.py. Uh, in that case, we could store all the all the like credentials etc in um, a separate file and in this case you're importing that file and all those variables directly in your python code um, i would say that this might not be the um, um, the most <laughs> secure way either because importing things from uh, another python file uh, is really not always the best practice you often store this in an in some kind of environment file or maybe a, a json configuration file um, but this is really much better than just storing it in plain text in your uh, code that means it will be quite hard for you to share your code and such uh, it also says that you could store it in environment vari variables um, this i'm uh, not uh, sure it will really work in the MicroPython environment, so it might be a little bit out in the in the blue here. This was uh, a demo of the 3.5, so let's see if we can get some other uh, responses if we utilize the GPT-4. Uh, Obviously, if you go to zero or one, you will get it more or less creative. I'm just going to keep it at seven, uh, 0 0.7 here for, for now. Um, and let's try to iterate and more or less do the same thing as we did last time. I'm going to copy paste a little bit just to speed it up. Um, and now I've uh, written more or less the same thing as I did before. I'm a beginner in IoT. I want to develop the project in a course in applied IoT. I'm free to choose my own project and I want to get some support here. I have bought a start package containing the following and it's the same information. And I want you to help me with some basic ideas on how to choose a very limited first project so I can start learning. Let's see what we can get. One thing that we can notice is that GPT-4 is uh, significantly slower in response than GPT 3.5. It's also much more expensive, uh, but it's also much better. And let's see if we can see uh, uh, get that um, uh, from this. And now it gives me a couple of advice. It's great that you're interested in learning IT. With the components that you have, there are plenty of possibilities for a beginner project and here are three basic ideas to get you started. And yeah, we can see that these ideas are, were quite much reflected in, um, 
in the other ones, but I think this is a more high quality uh, answer. Um, and um, let's um, start with um, the next thing. And I say that let's start with the basic temp and humidity. And I now say that I've just unpacked my things. And they tell me that I should use something called MicroPython and that I need some kind of connectivity. Remember, I am a total beginner in this area. Can you just get help, uh, just help me get started? By the way, I have a Mac M1, if that matters. So I'm now very clear that I am a total beginner in this area and I did explain that I need help. And now it starts to um, say connect your Raspberry Pico wireless age with headers to a Mac M1 step by step guide. And we can see that it recommends me installing Tony. Um, it's actually a very good beginner option, so not a bad advice at all. Uh, the link might not work, but let's let's see. It actually works. Um, we should send, then connect the Raspberry Pi Go um, to your Mac. Uh, you sh computer should automatically recognize it. And then I also get some advice now on, on actually interact with the IDE. Um, wire the DHT11 sensor. You can see now that it gives me advice. And then there is a short code snippet here. Uh, and a run button for to run the code and you should now be up and running. So I got a quite um, good uh, beginner instruction. Let's just go on and then now I write. Okay, but this white thing, I think it's called a breadboard. How does that work? Let's just ask the same question. A breadboard, also known as a solderous breadboard or prototyping board, is a tool used for creating temporary circuit, electronic circuits, etc., etc. And we now get a quite good, I would say, a more qualitative answer than what we did in the in the free version. Um, and we can see that uh, it actually describes the breadboard in a quite intricate way. And let's just wait until it finishes. Uh, we should connect power and ground, insert components and connect components. And for your temperature and humidity project, you can use the breadboard to connect the sensor. And then it gives me advice on how to actually connect everything. Let's try to ask the same question about the sponge, because I think one of the most interesting things with utilizing this kind of generative AI is that you can actually be very, you can ask and you will get an answer even if you don't have the exact uh, correct words uh, it will actually from the context hopefully get things right and i have now connected my device it doesn't work there are some strain there's some strange sponge in the bottom between the pins of my pico can you help me out here the strange sponge is likely a foam pad which is used to protect the pins in your raspberry pi pico during shipping you should remove this foam pad before using the pico as it can prevent proper electrical contact between the Pico pins and the breadboard. And this advice is uh, totally correct. Uh, so that means that we get, a, I was a little bit disappointed in the, uh, in the answer uh, before. Um, so this seems to be a good way of going and let's just continue. And then now I might say that it works uh, and I have just have a ton of screen up and manage to flash the firmware with the new MicroPython. And then, but this thing with code is too much for me as a beginner. I don't know where to start. Can you give me a very basic introduction to what sh I should do? I want to understand. Let's see how it responds to this. 
Of course, I'll give you a brief introduction of the code provided earlier for reading temperature and humidity values. Um, and now it gives me an introduction of what we have been demonstrated before. Um, I could also ask of giving more uh, concrete advice on different parts or maybe a general uh, advice on, on, on whatever. Um, and then I could as the next question just uh, tell it that uh, we can see now that there are some new words that show up and if you're a beginner in this area and you have never seen the word gpio that might not be uh, something that you do know so let's just go to the next question that you're now talking about things i don't understand gpio i also see the pico documentation a figure of a so-called pin out diagram could you describe what this is and what to connect here so many new things and we'll continue and it now gives me a good explanation of about the gpio general purpose input output um, and these are really the, the, what is important of a microcontroller uh, because that is uh, the interfaces for all the all kinds of sensors or other material that you want and you can see that the pinout diagram, that's the visual representation of the arrangement. And now it starts to explain like the 3.3 volt and the ground pins uh, and the, the GPIO pins, etc, etc. Um, so this is uh, a good way to start. And let's um, continue asking this because if you look at the Raspberry Pico pinout diagram, there are a lot of abbrevi abbreviations on that diagram that might not be super easy to understand if you haven't seen them before. So let's ask a follow up question here. What is the following on the pinout diagram? And then I prepared this, but there are a lot of abbreviations that you can see here, ADC, VBUS, VSYS, ADC, VREF, etc, etc. So I've just copied and pasted this from the pinout diagram. And then we get an explanation of this. So ADC, uh, that's the analog digital converter, and that converts an analog voltage level to a digital value uh, that the MCU can process. Um, VBUS, the USB voltage input pin, VSYS, ADC ref, uh, the reference voltage pin, etc, uh, etc. Et and we get, um, I would say, a good answer of just being able to understand um, a quite complex uh, system uh, if you're a beginner. So you don't necessarily need to understand all these things, but you now quickly get an overview of, of a, a lot of these terms. We could continue and ask question about what can you explain more about UART, for instance, or SPI. Um, but let's just skip on to something new. And now, can you tell me a bit about basic electronics? You mentioned a resistor, and that is important. Tell me more, and that that is important. Can you tell more about this? So let's see what it knows about electronics. Um, now we get a brief introduction to basic electronics, um, and let's start with the resistors. Uh, so we can see that the resistors are passive electronic components uh, that oppose the flow of electric current. Uh, we have um, a couple of use cases. We can control voltage, time delays, pull up or pull down, uh, and we measure them in ohms. Um, and it didn't say much about ohms law, but maybe we can see it will uh, soon.
actually now I have seen that it actually <laughs> mentioned Ohm's law. Um, so that's also good. Um, so the thing here, what I want to show is that uh, you have a lot of, um, I would say, help from, um, uh, from this kind of tools. And for instance, if we go into um, our um, uh, course, and if we, we could just take the study guide. Let's see if this works. Uh, I'll just copy and pa paste the study guide. Here is the study guide of the course. Uh, and now I've just copy pasted the study guide and um, I asked now ChatGPT of can you just help me with like I have a hard time just keeping up with the course um, and it now gives me a strategy to help me with the course uh, and this strategy is now generated on demand if you ask the same question if you repeat this experiment uh, you will likely get uh, um, maybe the same kind of answer but you will get a different answer um, this uh, this advice seemed to be quite good uh, uh, do an and now let's see if it if it actually can help me with with this um, something doesn't seem to work here uh, I'm regenerating And let's see if I can get ChatGPT from the current context of understanding because it doesn't know very much about the course. I have just copied the study guide and also chatted a little bit about that me being a beginner. Uh, what needs to be mentioned here is that uh, it doesn't, and in this case, it is not connected to the internet. Obviously, it's connected via the internet as I'm uh, utilizing internet for uh, for this, but it doesn't know anything about the course. If you use ChatGPT or other AI services, uh, there are also options of uh, these uh, plugins that uh, also can fetch information from the internet. So, but now I'm just utilizing the the core GPT-4 model. So in this case. It doesn't know anything more than the context of this thread. So that's um, uh, so. It, then you need to give it that. Uh, in this case, you can see that I, I got some advice here, um, and um, um, I would say that they are generally quite um, a good advice here. Um, I think this uh, might be um, the end of uh, this video. I just wanted to give you a short um, demonstration of um, how you could utilize uh, any AI assisted tools in this course for your own learning. Uh, obviously, uh, it can also be used to generate any kind of text, uh, but I, I just want to emphasize that, well, feel free to utilize any tools, but you are in charge of your project. You need to uh, do your project and you need to present it and speak for it. But in terms of learning, and I would say especially as a beginner in an area, uh, it's really, really good to utilize this kind of, of tools. Uh, what you could also do is to take a transcript of any of the lecture videos that we have and um, also use that transcript to um, ask questions about uh, the lecture material and such. 
but please use this as a learning tool uh, share also uh, your experiences in the discord server uh, that would be much appreciated uh, if you are using chat gpt the official chat gpt you are actually able to share your chat chats as well so with those words thank you